Alrighty, today we are going to be painting daffodils. So I'm using a size two round brush, some cold pressed watercolor paper. I've got two jars of water, so one for warm colors, one for cool colors. I've got some orange mixed up and some yellow as well. So to begin with, I'm going to paint the middle of my daffodil flower, which I'm going to use this orange for. So it's quite diluted, lots of water in it. And I'm just gonna dab the side of my brush on my cloth just to get rid of the excess. So to paint the middle of the flower, that's kind of like a tube or a cone, I'm actually using the side of my brush, dragging it along the page and lifting up again to create that kind of, I guess, cylinder effect. And I'll do that again on a slightly different angle as well. So using the side of the brush, dragging across the page and lifting back up again to create a kind of cylinder look. And we're just alluding to the flowers, not trying to be too um, accurate, as you can see. So don't worry about that. And I'm going to paint another one on its side. So side of the brush and lifting up again. And feel free to watch that a few times if you can't, if you just need to watch it um, to get your head around, I guess, the angle of the brush and everything. So now I'm going to grab some yellow and then my yellow is really, really bright. So I'm adding more water to dilute it. And now I'm going to paint the petals for my daffodils. So I'm just dabbing off the excess and I'm going to start here. The orange will likely bleed into the yellow, which is fine. So I'm going to paint a C curve, which if you haven't yet watched my brush strokes video, go back and watch that and then you know what I want about. So I've painted a C curve and I'm going to paint another one mirroring it, just like our leaf technique that we often use, but I'm doing it in yellow, so it's a petal. So again, I'm painting my C curve using the tip of the brush, pushing down with the belly of the brush, lifting back up again. And then another one mirroring it. And if you have a bit of a gap in the middle, that's awesome because that is you using negative space <laughs> or white space to create a bit of a highlight. And I'm going to paint another petal over here. And there we go, that's our first daffodil. Now I'm going to paint another one here, which I'm going to be kind of, I painted them quite close together, so I'm going to have to work behind this petal, which is fine, but let's just see what happens. I might actually start in this direction. So I'm actually just going to paint one C curve because the flower is on its side. Um, I'm just sort of painting the side of the petal. So I'm going to do the same over here. So it's just a single C curve, still using that technique where I use the tip of the brush, belly of the brush and the tip of the brush. And then I think to kind of combat this issue here, which was not planned, I'm going to paint this petal on its side as well. So what I'm going to do is really similar to these two, but much smaller. So I want the petal to be on its side using the tip of the brush, belly of the brush, tip of the brush and there we go that was incredibly impromptu and unplanned <laughs> obviously but let's see oh i just got a notification i don't know if you would have heard that <laughs> uh rule number one for recording videos make sure that your notifications are on silent anywho let's tackle this flower here so i'm just following the same techniques as before Tip of the brush, belly of the brush, tip of the brush, and the same thing again here. I'm going to add a bit more water to my yellow, just to dilute it a bit further. Ooh, too much paint and water, so I could see that there was like a blob of water about to drip, so I had to just dab that on the cloth. Tip of the brush, belly of the brush, tip of the brush. And the same thing here, tip of the brush, belly of the brush, tip of the brush, and again. And I'm actually going to add another brush stroke to this petal here. And I would like a petal in the background of this daffodil. So I'm gonna give that a crack, again impromptu, so we'll see what happens. Tip of the brush, belly of the brush, tip of the brush. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of 
um, like make that a bit wider just by doing some random little brush strokes. And I'm going to add in another petal here too. So C curve again, but not really using the belly of the brush that time. So this has kind of ended up on a weird angle, but have you ever seen a perfect flower out there in the wild? I don't think so. So if you ever make a mistake or a happy accident, I should say, um, it really doesn't matter. And I think it really makes your painting even more lovely. Okay, so now I'm going to grab a really dark green that I did not prepare earlier. So I think this is what I'm after. Just test it out. It is. Okay, so I'm grabbing a really, really dark green. I'll just transfer some into my tray. Are you getting organized vibes from me today? <laughs> All right, so adding a little bit more water to dilute it further, dabbing the side of the brush, and now I'm going to paint the stems and leaves. So I'm going to start here on our first flower using just the tip of the brush to paint a stem in a really lovely dark green. I'm going to do the same thing for all three of the flowers, and it's fine if your brush comes off the page like mine has. My hands are always a bit wobbly. And again, I think it adds character to your painting. And I'm not just saying that because my hands are wobbly. All right, so now I'm going to add the uh, leaves using just the tip of the brush, belly of the brush and tip of the brush again, but on a much longer sort of scale. So tip of the brush, belly of the brush, tip of the brush. And I'm gonna go in behind the flower a little bit To add some more depth and my leaf has actually tapped the petal so there's a little bit of bleed happening there and if you don't want that to happen with your artwork you'll need to wait wait for your first layer of paint to dry and then add your leaves then you won't risk that happening all right so I'm going to again use the tip of the brush belly of the brush I'm actually going to go right up to that petal as well in behind there too. Just repeating this process over and over again. You see that this leaf here is really gappy um, and that's completely fine because I'm using a lot of white space in this painting to just sort of allude to the leaves and the petals and that sort of thing rather than trying to be particularly accurate and now I'm going to rinse my brush and add in a little more detail on the flowers themselves now I would recommend waiting until your flowers are dry but do as I say not as I do Grabbing a bit more concentrated orange on my brush, dabbing off any excess on the cloth and adding in a little more detail and depth with our wet on dry technique, which again is another tutorial I've already got on my page or um, my channel, sorry. So if you're wondering what wet on dry is, go back and watch that too, but it's a great way to add depth and detail to your painting. So I'm adding some orange on the middle of the flower and then I'm grabbing some of my yellow and I'm not diluting it this time, not so much. I'm just adding a few little brush strokes onto the petals. To add a bit more depth and detail. And there you go, some lovely whimsical daffodil flowers. And if you love this video, it would be amazing if you could subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out 
on more tutorials every Tuesday. And if you could like and comment on the video, that would be awesome as well. It helps other people like you find my videos. So thank you.